Hi, friends, and welcome to another episode of Regarding Consciousness. I am Jennifer K. Hill, founder of Ohm Heals and Optimal Match, and I am so grateful to have here with us today a dear friend who, gosh, you might think we've gone back about 10 years now, and <laughs> it is so incredible to have seen Shima Shad Ru's evolution since in this time that I've known her. She has always been one of the biggest hearted people I know, creator of Infinite Love Coaching, as well as the new Infinite Love best-selling book that she wrote that is getting wide acclaim about how we can embrace our inner self, our inner knowing for our finances, our personal lives, our professional lives, and how we can use this inner knowing and inner wisdom and heart's intuition to living our best lives. So Shima, I love you, my friend. It's such a pleasure to have you with us today. Thank you so much, my dear Jennifer. I love you and I'm very, very honored to be here with you today. Thank you. Yeah, so my gosh, I mean, there's so many directions we can go, Shima. Let's start off with a little bit of your story for people who might not know it. Growing mm -hmm. up in Iran during the wars and, and your life being in danger, I mean, it's just so compelling when you talk about it and share your story. Yes. Well, uh, <laughs> I, I believe we choose our path before we come to this life. And so when we are born, we don't know about it. But later on, I have learned that uh, I was always asking myself, why did I choose to be born in a country with uh, full of conflict? And once I found my purpose and when I started to walk in the path of the purpose of my soul, I realized actually that was all divinely planned. So um, the, the curse actually is a blessing at the same time. <laughs> and uh, it was very tough um, and it was a tough experience, but the learnings from it uh, helped me to become a person who I am today. So yeah, I'm, I'm grateful for that actually. <laughs> yeah, it's much like another dear friend of ours who was on the show a few weeks ago, Irvin Laszlo, who shared he grew up during war-torn Hungary in World War II. And we were talking about the trauma and he said, oh, Jennifer, there was no trauma. There were just soldiers, you know, going above <laughs> us who had they found us, they would have shot us, but there was no trauma. And I just admire <laughs> you and Irvin and all of the resilient spirits out there. I mean, the things that we can never possibly understand, you know, our hearts go out to people in Turkey and the Ukraine and around the world right now in Russia, who are all dealing with these conflicts in countries and natural disasters. And, and so talk to us, Shima, how do we learn to come from infinite love when it seems like there's so much darkness and pain and heartbreaking chaos in the world right now? Mm -hmm. So um, actually suffering and going through the challenges in life is necessary step to grow and to come to the light. So if you want to plant a seed, you need to put it deep into the darkness and dirt. That's the only way a seed can find its way to the light. You don't see any seed that is growing over the, uh, over a table or on the air, you know, so... <laughs> That, that's necessary. If you look at the process of giving birth, you see how much hardcore both the baby and the mother are going through in order to come a new person. I mean, the mother will change and transform completely during the birth to a new person. And the child as well is coming from the um, spiritual realm, coming to a physical realm. So it's a huge transformation and it's deeply painful. If you look at the birth process, we see how painful is that. So what I have learned from my own journey and what I have shared in the book, if you are in the deepest, darkest part of your life, be happy because after this, you're going to raise to the light and you're going to shine very bright. So most of the time to the people that I'm dealing with, my clients or patients that come to me for trauma therapy or coaching, um, when I find them in, in, in really tragic situations, I, the only thing I say is I, 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 I congrats you for being there because it needs a lot of courage to be where you are and embrace that situation and, and be present about it and knowing that before you want to jump, you need to bend a little bit over your knee. And that 
gives you a big jump for your life and and that's really necessary so the situation what i have been through was not easy i was born during the war between iran and iraq in tehran and my early childhood memory the first 8 years of my life is growing during the war and um witnessing the bomb and the terror and the horror and all all the conflict of human human being um especially i was born during the after the revolution islamic revolution in iran so i was born into a government that is enforcing islamic education mm. and that conflict um lighted this uh, candle inside my heart to uh, to search for the truth what is the truth what is behind the religion what is behind all the human suffering how can we create more peace on planet earth and how can we create more peace inside us and create this inner peace to be able to radiate it around us and that is what i share specifically in three chapters of the book about uh, creating coherence in your heart and radiating this information and this uh, coherence with the world around us in order to create a um, global peace. Mm. Yes, as you know, and uh, many of you listeners out there may know, I'm a huge fan of heart mass work. And uh, that's the the machine behind Joe Dispenza, Greg Braden, Bruce Lipton. A lot of their work is based on this idea of coherence. So Shima, in case people are not familiar with it, can you give people a little tidbit or an essence of what coherence is and why it matters? Sure. Um, so uh, um, please allow me to tell you how I came across with hard heart math teaching, which was amazing and transformative in my life. As I walked into the path of um, um, basically my soul evolution and understanding who am I and what am I doing here and how my body functions, I started to go to many different ideologies to understand how we function. And I went into the um, understanding of nihilism. For, for a while, I was into deeply into the science and Big Bang theory and evolution, revolution theory and all made completely perfect, perfect sense for me. And um, I, from there, I realized there is something missing. It's not only about that. So it was only I went deeply into the science. I studied 20 years quantum physics as well. And I realized that's not only what is giving me the answer. And I had a spontaneous trip to um, to southern Turkey, where I visited uh, Rumi, the biggest uh, prophet of love from Persia, whose tomb is in, in Konya. And something shifted in me. I was 18 years old and I felt uh, angelic beings around me. I felt I had a miraculous trip, which I shared it in the book. That trip uh, uh, actually awakened me into something much bigger than who am I and much bigger than what I have learned about the world of conflict. I felt the presence of loving beings around me that is guiding and creating the entire ceremony and everything that happened there. So from there, I I started to walk this path, uh, also learning about more about Rumi's and Sham's teachings. Then um, in 2007, um, the seminar of Greg Braden in Milano about uh, accessing the intelligence of your heart actually gave me the answer, all the answer I was looking for. How can we create peace on earth by just changing um, the emotions in our own body? And that was the greatest answer I was looking for. So then I started to um, to study deep into the teachings of Heart Mass Institute, mm -hmm. and I, I became a heart intelligence facilitator from Heart Mass, and I studied really deep. And that information, it's I I would say this is a gem. This is so precious. Thirty years of scientific studies about how our body functions and how the heart can create a shift. The, the uh, immense power we have in our heart can create a shift in the global well-being of everybody. So um, how do we do that, actually? It's very simple. Uh, there is electromagnetic field around all of us. Around every living being, there is electromagnetic field. And the electromagnetic field of the heart, specifically, 
is the widest electromagnetic field around our body. So like the brain has electromagnetic field, the heart has electromagnetic field, our gut has electromagnetic field, every cell has its own electromagnetic field, but the heart itself has electromagnetic field that scientists can measure this up to two meter in, uh, around us. So that means if I'm sitting here, two meter in front of me, two meter behind, two meter on the left, right, above and below, that's the reflection of electromagnetic field of my heart. This electromagnetic field reflects my inner emotions to the world. It's like a mirror. And it's receiving the data from the electromagnetic field of others and also of our planet and sending that to the brain. Then the brain will act uh, accordingly and, and send the messages to different parts and organs of our body. So actually, heart is our first brain, and that's our first part of the body that developed during the fetal development. So it's very, very important to understand, and this should become the main teachings at our at our schools, you know, that children need to learn this, what we have learned completely the other way around, considering the brain as a taskmaster of the body, and, and everything went into one dimension, which is the science. Mm. And so how do we change this? How we how do we understand this um, power of that we have inside our heart, the emotion that we are creating? So we need to understand that whatever I feel inside my heart is reflected in the electromagnetic field around me. And this electromagnetic field is interacting with others' electromagnetic field. In a, a very simple example, you go to a place where everybody is happy. And all of a sudden you get happy. You don't know, you don't have any reason. You know, you just go there and all of a sudden you get happy because the mood is influencing you. Or you go to a place where everyone is tense and you feel the tension immediately, feel uncomfortable, you want to leave the place. You had this experience, I'm sure. Hmm. So that's because of the in communication between the electromagnetic field of our hearts. So this is a normal number of communication. This over 85% of our communication is nonverbal. So how am I going to interact? How am I going to influence? First of all, I need to become aware of the power of this emotion. Whatever I feel in my heart is creating a change in the electromagnetic field around me, like I'm throwing a stone inside the ocean and creating the waves that reaches the other side of the ocean, even if I don't see it. So the scientific studies shows when I'm creating um, the state of heart coherence or inner peace or inner calm or gratitude, this can influence 100,000 people around me. So if you feel right now everything is very tense and people are living in a deep state of fear because of the scarcity that is promoted out there with the media, you need to bring your attention back to your own power. How much can you infl influence the life of others by creating peace inside your own heart? Mm -hmm. So this is explained by Heartmass Institutes in very in a very simple step, like two, two simple steps. Just what you need to do is you start to breathe deeply and slowly and bring your attention to your heart. You can do that by placing your hand over your heart or just close your eyes and visualize your heart area. And intentionally slow down your breathing rhythm. And at this very moment, create a feeling of gratitude or appreciation in your heart. So well done. You created coherence in your heart. Very simple. It takes a couple of seconds and we have this ability to do this at any given moment. But by just doing this simple exercise, we can not only influence our own health, we can also impact 
the global well-being of everyone else. The details are explained in the book with all the uh, actually links to the scientific researches. And also I have connected this to the teachings in the of the ancient spiritual teachers, which is where we are connecting the science with the spirituality and merging these two together. Because today is the time for us to understand that we can't go only from one way from the brain and the science. We need to bring our brain in the, in the service of our heart, to bring our science in the service of our spirituality. And by merging these two together, that's the only way we can create a holistic approach to everything in our life, to understand who we are as a holistic being, as a whole being, mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual, and attend every area in our life in a holistic manner, whether it's health, finances, relationship, every area. Mm, it is. I, I love HeartMath. As you know, I'm a proponent of it as well. I love, I collaborate with HeartMath on their uh, monthly global he coherence pulse that they do. And I just feel so grateful to have this wisdom and all of us that we have access. You could feel it when Shima took us through that beautiful exercise, how you s connect to a sense of calm and peace. And I remember I became introduced to HeartMath during COVID. I was hosting a series of shows for them with first responders, nurses, doctors, firefighters, police officers who are all responding during COVID. And it's incredible how just dropping into that state of coherence, it plugs the energy leaks. It's like you're in this big, gigantic ship and that ship is your body. And when you're feeling angry or frustrated for prolonged periods of time, all of a sudden you have water getting in that boat and you're sinking. And it's that proverbial feeling of, I'm not going to survive this. And yet, as Shima so beautifully just illustrated to us, when we shift into that heart brain coherence, we re energize ourselves. It's like plugging in our cell phones and recharging that battery. Though I do want to highlight, Shima, and you talk about this in the book as well about feelings and how important it is to not just kind of spiritually bypass feelings. It's not to say, don't ever feel angry. You're bad if you feel angry or sad. I think step one is to acknowledge where you're at. If you look at it like a grid, where are you at on this grid of sadness, anger, fear, anxiety, hope, love, joy, and just to connect to that and then notice how enhanced your emotions become when you begin to shift out of it, though I think there is something to be said for feeling the emotions. Can you talk about that? Absolutely. Absolutely, um, my dear. Thanks for mentioning that. Actually, in the uh, chapter three of the book, I'm talking about who we are and um, uh, mentioning this um, very famous um, uh, sentence of uh, Wayne Dyer. I love that. Uh, <laughs> we are not a human being having a spiritual experience. We are a spiritual being having human experience. And I would like to rephrase that with... We are not a human being having energetic experience. We are energetic being having human experience. And what is emotion? Emotion is basically energy in motion. So as Tesla says, if we want to understand the secrets of life, we need to look at the terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. And we do need to understand this. It's very, very important statement. So as you say, is that emotion is super important. And I'm sharing a concept in this book that um, is about, basically, it's also based on the teachings of heart mass about uh, heart-based uh, emotions so, and based on heart and mind. Because everything that is fear-based is related to the mind. Because what is fear is lack of love. And everything that is love-based and joy-based has a high vibration is related to the heart. So this is the concept that I introduce here, that heart-based thoughts, which are creating heart-based emotions, basically, heart-based words and heart-based deeds, they are three really part of the triangle that you see on the Merkaba of infinite love that help you to raise to a higher vibration and higher dimension. And on the contrary, uh, you see the fear-based thoughts, fear-based words, and fear-based deeds, they bring you down and they lower your vibration. So it's all about your vibration 
is all about the thought you are having, the um, energetic reaction to that thought, which is the emotion, and how are you going to use that in order to create the ideal version of you or to create the life you desire. It's based on how you are going to calibrate this emotion. It's all coming to that to the emotional part. So I use an example. Um, if imagine just coming back to your uh, to your um, uh, question about how to use the emotion in order to create a change and first accept it and allow it to be. Imagine that you are uh, you're standing in the lobby of a big um, sky uh, tower and uh, you want to get inside the elevator. And this is like 50, uh, 50 floor and you press uh, 50. You go to the top floor and on the top floor, you have your desired life. Everything is designed as you would like to be. So imagine you have a beautiful um, scenery full of plants and green and every person that is there is acting for, uh, from love and joy and collaboration. They all are in come in a harmony with you. So you, you create this in your mind, create your top floor, top floor the way you want. And then imagine you press number 20 and you go to another level. And this is a level that people are in, in, in harmony. People are nice with each other. But there is still some conflicts, maybe. Maybe it's not at as 100% as a 50 floor. You imagine the 10th floor. If you go to the 10th floor, so it's a little bit a mix. Some, some chaos is happening, but it still is a mix. And you see some good and bad is some uh, actually mixed emotions are there. Imagine also you go to the parking floor. <laughs> <laughs> when you, pair, you press the minus button, goes go minus two or minus three, you go to the parking and that's a basement that is complete chaos. Everything is not working and people are really rude with each, each, each other. It's a competitive world. And so every morning when you wake up, the moment you are going to come to this, uh, this dream, this to, to step out into this dream that we call this life, this physical life. You have this opportunity to press these buttons, the triangle upward or triangle downward. And depends on how long time you spend on your morning routine. If you do five minutes of affirmation, 10 minutes of meditation, 15 minutes of visualization, all the routines that is explained in the book, you can land in each of these flows. And that is how you raise your vibration and you enter a new reality. The interesting part about it, it's not about who is out there and what is happening out there. It's always about you, who you are, and what is happening inside here. So what is your energetic state, your emotional state, when you wake up and you are going to meet the people around you, you are going to meet this dream version of life, depends on only what is inside you. People around you will adjust their behavior and will adjust their um, their attitude toward you. Beautiful. I love this analogy, Shima. It's so tangible is the way I would describe it it's you can really viscerally sense where you're at like as soon as you said that I was like huh where did I wake up this morning okay 38 maybe <laughs> you know and it's beautiful just to kind of see and to use it as a measure and I could almost see Shima that people could write this down in their journal and just say hey you know what I noticed today I was at a level you know, 15, when I woke up, I spent some time in meditation, I got up to level 20. And just to begin to be the conscious observer of where you're at emotionally, physically, mentally, and spiritually. And I, I do want to highlight what you said about the fear versus love thing. It is so powerful. As you know, I, I love to say Kabbalah. And I remember one of the most beautiful things one of my Kabbalistic teachers ever said, is he said, Jen, any choice you make, you have two choices. You can do it from fear or you can do it from love. If you mm -hmm. do it from fear, I was going through a divorce at the time and I was not sure if I should divorce my ex-husband or not. Mm -hmm. And my, David said, Jen, 
if you can say, I'm going to divorce him from a place of love, you're awesome. You're golden. You know, you're coming from the right place. So if you're doing it from a place of fear, you're going to have to pass the same test over again in your next relationship. And I was like, wow, so powerful when you can just understand. And also we don't have time to fully get into it today, which is why we recommend Shima's book is David Hawkins levels of consciousness too, is exactly what you're talking about. If you're looking at the base levels, Mm -hmm. anger, fear, guilt, shame, and the highest levels being peace, joy, enlightenment, and love, you know, we're always vacillating though, as we reach higher and higher levels of consciousness, as Kimberly Meredith was also talking about in another recent episode on awakening to the fifth dimension, We all have this beautiful spectrum of emotions and floors that we can stop on. And it's our choice how long we get to stop and stay on each floor. So Shima, as always. Absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely, Jennifer. And um, this is actually this chart of David Hawkins is in the book, is in the same chapter that it's very interesting that you mention it. And it gives us a a great visual of how the emotions are and how can we just maneuver between different different vibrations. And just one small thing I would add, um, it's when you go to the parking slot, when you go in that elevator example to the emotions that um, like you wake up, you didn't have any time for your morning routine. Imagine you have small babies who are crying or (laughs) whatever is happening to you. And It is, as you said, very important to embrace that emotion, to understand, use that emotion as a compass and ask yourself throughout the day, how do I feel? That's the most important fact for your creation, for your manifestation in your life. So if you are feeling anxious or stressed out or not happy or anything that is coming down to the fear-based emotions, that's the moment you need to get yourself back to the elevator. So this is a little bit different when when I'm uh, using in my sessions and therapy sessions. In psychotherapy, normally we say, okay, you, you, uh, I mean, a patient who come to us with a lot of trauma or is in a a very difficult, dark situation, stay there, bring it out. And I 100% agree with that, but I do not allow them to stay there long. So I tell them, go there, do all your cries, don't stay there. Use the tools, press the button, come up before it's too late. So that's the b- difference between this teaching because it's a combination with coaching, always looking to the future, always looking to creating a better self and moving. So it, embracing that emotion, accepting it, being grateful for it, and coming up. Oh, beautiful Shima. Well, tell everyone where can they find your book, Infinite Love? Where can they find out about you and your coaching practices? So, the book is on Amazon uh, globally. Uh, it's available in three different versions. And also, they can uh, find out more about me and my services on, inf- on infinitelove.es or shimashatruth.com. And um, I would encourage everyone to also check. Um, our new um, approach to health on Infinite Love Holistic Health Resort on shimashadru.com. So it's a complete new movement in the health industry and what defines the future of health to looking at the human being as a whole and approaching the health from holistic uh, point of view. Oh. I love it, my friend. Well, thank you so much. Shima has been here with us today. Definitely do check out her book. We are so lucky to have such incredible guests such as Shima and others who have been with us on this show. And my intention for each and every one of us is that you walk away with something of value. Maybe there was a little nugget. Maybe it was the elevator story that Shima shared or learning a bit about heart-focused breathing or coherence. Whatever it is, our intention for each and every one of you is that tomorrow, perhaps your life is lived a little bit more fully with a little bit more joy, happiness, fulfillment, and purpose in your step. And we are so grateful that you chose to spend your time here with us today. And thank you for being with us. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you so much for um, this uh, beautiful opportunity and also for all the love and light that you are sharing and everything that you are doing. 
And I would like to seize this moment to thank you all, beautiful friends, to listen to us. And happy International Women Day, by the way. It's going to be tomorrow. And I send you all love. Bless you.